earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Shall we stand, join in with the choir, as God from whom all blessings flow.
but Jesus is something. Simple formula. He'll make everything all right. Yes, he will. I know I'm right about it. Amen, amen. Scripture is coming from the, the Psalms, gay. The middle of the Bible, the heart of God. The Psalms. Psalms of David. And slip over to 124. A Psalm of Degrees of David, number 124. God is still a good God. While you're finding that place, if you don't mind standing for the reading of the word, Ezra opened the book and the people stood. If you've got it, say amen. amen. A song of degrees of David. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers, the snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and the earth. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of the Lord shall stand forever. God bless you. You may be seated. His word is already blessed. Oh, yeah, How many know he's worthy? Yes, sir. Make the Lord worthy. Yes, Come on, let's praise him. Yes, yes. Sing me.
declares that if you give according to scripture, God will open up the rooms of heaven for you out of blessing that there should not be room enough to receive. And I don't know about you, but I could use that kind of blessing. And I know God is good for his part. Amen. So thank you. Our church clerk is coming now. She's going to acknowledge any visitors and read the church announcements at this time. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's all right. Come on. Everybody knew who I am. Anyway, I'm not, not really a visitor. I've been, I've been here a couple of years since the uh, COVID-19. I'm all, it's always good to come to club, clubs over to the Baptist Church. Well, I'm among friends. Bless you. Amen. 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 Bless you. Church announcements. We are less than a week away to celebrate Black History Month. The Black History Month 2023 theme is Black Resistance, which explores how African Americans have resisted historic and ongoing oppression. So during the Sunday morning service for the entire month of February, in honor of Black History Month, we will have an open forum where you are encouraged to participate through poem, song, dance, speech, or a historical story honoring the history and heritage of African Americans. If you would like to participate in any of the Sunday services, please see Deacon Keenan Bryant. Also, we ask if you would like to, please wear African attire each Sunday to symbolize unity. Pastor Smiley is asking if anyone has need of anything. Please don't hesitate to reach out to him or one of our church officers of the church. The church will assist as best as we can. Please tell a neighbor, tell a friend, tell everyone about our weekly services on Sunday. Sunday school is every Sunday morning from 9.45 to 10.30 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship service is at 11.15 a.m. And our virtual Bible study is at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday nights. This has been a reading of the church announcements. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Amen.
Him. God is. You can fill in the rest. God is. The song says, my everything. And that's the truth of the matter. God is. Thank you, praise team. Come on, can we give the praise team a hand? And now and then we, we need to pat our praise team on the back. And let them know that they're doing a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the ministry of music. We love ourselves in music. Yes. Am I right about it? Yes. What would church be without music? Yes. Lord, Lord, it would be a lot of sleeping heads. <laughs> a lot of elbow poking. <laughs> Amen. 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 Without music. And we ain't always had the drums or the piano. That's we right. had hands and feet. That's right. And That's we still made it happen. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. I know I'm right about it. I ain't too young. I used to go to some of them old churches. They ain't had no piano. But they had some feet patting and some hands. Oh, Jesus. Crazy. Day in the morning. You all don't want a piano up in there. They know how to do it. And I know they got some churches up here the same way. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Psalms. 124. God is my everything. Yes. Psalms 124. And I just want that first verse. I read the entire number of the psalm. And I just want that verse number one. You got it? Say amen. amen. It just says, matter of fact, let's read it together. Y'all got it ready? Read. Yes. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, Amen. 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 Subject. Look at your neighbor. They didn't hear me. Oh, they can't hear real good, so I want you to. I ain't got enough amplification. So help your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If it had not been for him. Amen. That's it. If it had not been for him. There's a lot we can put in the end of that. As a matter of fact, my subject got an open quote, but it doesn't have an end. I don't believe that was intentional. I believe the Lord did that in my... Wasn't a typo. Because it ain't no clothes on it. You put that whatever it is you need behind the hem. If it had not been for him. My brothers and Holy Ghost sisters. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. My Holy Ghost brothers and my godly sisters, he's an awesome God. Yes, he is. And the God we serve is full of glory, power, majesty, and dominion. Yes. And he stands above <laughs> all other little gods. Amen. Because everything that stands up beside God is a little G God. And he's above all other gods. He's God all by himself. Matter of fact, he don't like nobody to try to even come up on his level. Songwriter said angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. I'm just glad to be on Team Jesus. And on the Lord's side, and even gladder or happier that the Lord is on my side. All right. All right. Is there anybody in here who, who's just glad to be on Team Jesus? Yes. 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 See, there's no losing on Team Jesus. Yes. I don't care how big the enemy might look, 
You ain't gonna lose if you on Jesus' team. Well, now they get they playing a little football today. Somebody's gonna win. Somebody's gonna lose. But if you if you hang it out with Jesus, I promise you you're on the winning team. Am I right about it? Tell your neighbor, Jesus is the winning team. Jesus is the winning team. The songwriter said, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. Then a little light from heaven filled my soul, bathed my heart in love, wrote my name above. Just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. He picked me up, and I don't, it did not just me, but he picked us up when we were down, and he placed our feet on higher ground. Yeah, and he's an awesome God. He's a mind fixer. Yes, he is. He's a heart regulator, yes. a burden bearer, mm -hmm. and a heavy load shepherd. Yes. He's a rock, a sword, and shield. Mm -hmm. Somebody picked it up and said he's a shield in the battlefield. Okay. He's my all in all, the center of my joy, my yes. refuge and my rock, my strong tower yes. in the time, my fortress in the time of need, a very present help in the time of trouble. Somebody ought to know that he's good. And I don't know what I would do or where I would go or where I would be. I don't know where to go or how to go or how to be. I don't know who, what, where, when, or why. I, I just don't know where I would be if it had not been for him. If it had not been for him. And that's what I want to talk about. If it had not been for him. And him being the Lord. David wrote our text upon the occasion of some great deliverance which the Lord wrought for him and for the nation of his people. Whatever the deliverance, David was greatly appreciative and God's goodness was here greatly magnified. God is praised for number one, allowing them avoidance of ruin an avoidance of danger. And you find this a lot in the Psalms. Number two, he's praised for God uh, uh, allowing escape from danger and from the peril at hand. He's glorified, he glorifies God, David glorifies God and takes encouragement, number three, to trust in the Lord forevermore for his great wonders and his great act of mercy. And I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know. I really don't. I don't know where I would be. I've been in some situations. I don't even understand why I'm here. But if it had not been for him, I certainly would not have been here. If it had not been for him on my side. And now, in helping to understand David's joy, and as I said on last week, we're in this holding pattern around praise and giving God glory. But in helping to understand David's joy and his jubilant disposition in the text, there's three things I want to talk about. And these are just to give some insight and help you understand why this man was so rejoiceful and he, in making this statement, if it had not been for the Lord. Number one, I want to talk about the state in which we live. And I ain't talking about Virginia. I'm talking about your disposition of man, your state, the state that we live in. And then I want to talk about the place in which we live. And I ain't talking about gold vein, amen. I'm talking about enemy territory. And then I want to talk about the time in which we live. And that would be parents' time. So I want to talk really about the flesh, the state we live in, the, the enemy territory, the place we live in, and perilous time the time in which we live. And these help give some light to why we glorify God and why we give him praise for situations that come up into our, into our space, the state, the place, and the time in which we live. Why we ought to praise and glorify God. Can I get a witness? Now the first thing is the state of man. Uh, the state in which we live. Humanity, the flesh. Uh, first of all, without God, we would be nothing. You need to know that right up front. Without God, we would 
be nothing. Uh, state in which we live. Humanity, the flesh, without God. We've been a, see, man, first of all, let me, let me, let me do a little teaching. First of all, the man is composed of three parts. The body, the soul, and the spirit. Know that, know that. The sarks, Greek word, body is the sarks. The body is the flesh, and this part of man is that part we see. The flesh, you know, we see of one another, the, the outward. Part of man communicates, and, and it's in contact with the world through the five senses. Taste, touch, smell, hear. The sight, the body. It had no dealings with God. Hear me, hear me now. As far as communication, God, God, God don't have no communication with your flesh. It have no dealings. See, see, we get it twisted. We think our intellect talks with God. But no, 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 no. Just because you smart, God ain't dealing with your intellect. It's deeper than what you might think you know. See, some of us are so smart, we think our intellect talking with God, but it ain't your intellect. Your intellect read what his words say, and you try your very best to break it down. But your mental is part of your flesh. And God don't communicate with that. He communicates deeper than your intellect. It's a spiritual thing. And that's where some of us fall off the wagon. Because we don't have the right kind of spirit. So we don't fully, all we can rely on is our flesh, our natural mind. But, but, but God don't deal with that. God, God is in control of everything. But when he communicates with you, it's not through your natural mind. God have no dealings with the, the flesh. The flesh. You have no it, it, your flesh is just a shell that you live in. Well, right. Now, 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 now. The next part of man, those three parts, mm -hmm. is, is the soul, the suke. Right. Greek word, the suke. Mm -hmm. This is the seed of man. And, and the, 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 the suke or the soul is that part of man that will never die. It was designed to live forever. You can't see the suke with your natural eyes. But in essence, you are your suke. When I look at you, I see your outer shell. But the person is the soul. That's your, that's you, you, your soul. The, the suke. The suke, right? The seed of man. The part of man that never died. It's our reasoning, our conscience, our memory, our feelings affections and our imaginations. The soul will forever reside in the end times either in heaven or in hell. Can I get a witness? Your flesh going to rot and go back and decay back to the earth from which it came. But the real you, the soul, is going to live forever either in heaven above or in hell below. Right. Okay, so soul will, will reside either, either up or down. Man's whole struggle in life. This is the struggle. This is the struggle. The struggle in life is trying to save and secure that soul peace. Can I get a witness? Right. Yeah, man. Flesh, body, soul, spirit. Soul's in the middle. Because why is the soul in the middle? Because there's a war. The flesh want to rule your soul. And we ain't got to the spirit yet, but the spirit wants to rule your soul. And God's word is telling us to let the spirit win because that's, we ain't got that yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The whole struggle is trying to secure, to save the soul part, not the flesh. You know, this flesh going to wrinkle up. It's, the hair going to turn white like my beard. <laughs> Our bone structure going to get weak and start buckling. Y'all know I'm right about it. 
flashing away in that hood. It pretty now, it might be pretty now, but it ain't gonna be that way for long. And you're gonna do everything you can <laughs> to try to hold it together. Y'all know I'm right about it. All right, let me leave y'all alone. I ain't gonna go there. And so, so the struggle is trying to save that soul part. And then there is the pneuma. Greek word, pneuma, the spirit part. Spirit is that part of man that is in contact with God. That's why, that's why uh, the, 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 the wise counsel is to have the spirit win in the battle over the soul. Now, 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 I'm off my notes, but this is where Paul calls Christians carnal. When they allow the flesh to rule their soul. You're carnal, you're carnal. You ain't, you ain't got no spirituality. Everything you, you do is centered around what the flesh wants you to do. And God wants us to change. He wants the spirit part because that's the part that talks back and forth to glory. In contact with God, our spirit man. And within the spirit part of man, we find elements of spirituality, the faith element, the hope element, worship and reverence and the praise parts. Those godly things are found in the pneumatic part of man. Now, 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 if I might use the illustration of a light bulb, the spirit part of man is either in an on state or an off state. When you turn the light bulb on, you get light, right? Turn it off, it's dark. So, 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 if you're not saved, your switch is off. Your house is dark. Can I get a witness? I ain't picking at nobody. I'm just telling you like a T.I. If you ain't saved, your house dark. Ain't no light up around there. And guess what? We can feel it and see it. You ain't got to say a word. When your light off, we know it. Can I get a witness, church? Some of us got some light switches in the off position. And in order for your soul to be saved, your life got to be on. The battle is over the soul. The struggling man is over. Who wins the soul? Who are you letting drive you? All right. Here's the good part. Saved folk rejoice in God because that light is on. It is not on because you're rich. It's not on because you got a little money in the bank. It's not on because you're cute or you go to church always, always there when the doors open. It ain't on just because. It's not on because you know the Bible, in and out. Devil know the Bible. He can quote you scriptures. Yeah, it's not on because you're a college graduate with all these degrees up on the wall. No, no, it's not on. It's not. Your light is on because God favored you. He chose you. God wanted and he willed you to be saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled and fire baptized. And it's no doing of your own if you say, look at John 6 and 44. It says, no man can come to me except the Father draw him to me. And I will raise him up in the last day. It was God who had you on his mind. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why David rejoiced. And that's why you ought to rejoice if you're saved. Because God had you on his mind before you were even conceived of. God had you. God, God, God thought about you. It was God who touched you and picked you up and turned you around and placed you. It was God who threw that trouble into your life and caused you to look the other way. It was God who caused that bush to burn around you and for you to ask, why is it not being consumed? Oh, Moses wasn't the only one that had a burning bush. Some of us have been in some hot stuff. Come on here, talk to me, somebody. God had you on his mind. It was 
God. You thought you found him, but in essence, God found him. He saved you, he fixed you, he healed and delivered you. Tell your neighbor, it was God, baby. It was God. And if it had not been for him, if it had not been for God. There are a lot of people in the graveyard. A lot of bodies out there. And when you go into glory, you might not see them. And it ain't but two places you can go. Hell or heaven. Heaven or hell. And so you ought to rejoice in knowing that God had you on his mind. And if it had not been for the Lord. So that's the state of man. David, David understood well the state of man. You know his disposition. That three parts. The, the next thing was place in which we live. The world. The enemy territory. James 4 and 4 say, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world. I told you, now this is going to be a teaching spirit today. James 4 and 4, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So what does that say to you? What that says you, you, can't, you can't be attached to the world. Matter of fact, you ought to do everything in your power to get away from the world because the world represents enemy to God. Now you ought to know that the world and things around us is contrary. It's, it's in opposite. It's, it's what the young folk call an op. Yeah, yeah, y'all don't want no ops around here. Can I get a witness? Some of the young folk looking like pastor, look at pastor, look at him. You've been looking at that TV again, you've been looking at it. But the world is contrary. Things of the world play on our lust. They will lead us. Now, you got to be careful how you address this. Things of the world will lead you. And the reason I say that is you can you can get away with hanging out with the world, but if you hang around, if you hang around too long, he gonna want he gonna want a prize. And it's gonna take you to the place called hell. It'll lead you. Things of the world will lead you to the grave, drugs and alcohol, love of money, status in life, cars and houses, credit card, debt, want to be this and got to have that. Some folk will go to extreme measures to obtain fame and popularity. They even got the church now in these new uh, uh, real, reality TV doing all kind of crazy stuff under the name of the church. And I believe our brother Bishop McClurkin spoke out against the church. What it's doing now for fame and popularity. Compromising God's word. Hmm. Yeah, some folk will go to extreme measures to get this fame and this money and this popularity to the point of selling their soul to the devil, that social media thing, they, uh, that, 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 that internet, that Facebook, that Twitter, that IG and Instagram, that hashtag this and hashtag that. Gambling and living riotous, party over here. C can I get a witness? Men ain't chasing women always now, men chasing men. Women ain't chasing just men anymore, they women chasing women. Bragging about how they can get more women than the bro. This is the world we live in. And it's crazy, it's contagious, and it's, it's just been took off. Homosexuality used to be in the closet. Now it's out on Front Street. And no shame. And I need up a day to mess with them. You got something on your hand. You know what else they did? It then crept up in the church. God from Mount Zion. Same sex marriages. Saw something the other night on the TV. Lord, this lady. Lord, I'm missing. Niece and Nat, is it? Niece yeah. Married. To 
to a same sex. I was I was blown out the wall. Y'all know I'm right about it. Y'all y'all know y'all know her status. <laughs> Get on Google once we done. Google to pull it right on up for you. The world we live, wars and rumors of war. Terrorism and stuff, and we don't have to go overseas for that no more. We hear about that in the news just the other day, five on one. <laughs> Poor boy ain't had a chance. Active shooters. Hold on, we're gonna wait for Jesus to call us in. <laughs> Homicides. Y'all know I'm just joking now. You're just messing with Dick Ham. I'm gonna talk to him afterwards. <laughs> Suicide, it happens to all of us. Sometimes we forget to turn it off. Yeah. Murdering and homicides and shooting in our school, six year old. Yeah. What kind of stuff is this? A six year old. Know how to handle a gun. I just had a little birthday party with my little nephew yesterday. He's eight and don't look like he can even hold a gun. He's a little scrambly little fella. Little six year old and pointed a gun and shot an adult in the chest. But if it had not been for the law. If it had not been so many things in this world would have hurt me, would have hurt us, and not help us. So many things would have taken us out, torn us down instead of building us up. So many things in this world, look back over your life, look in the mirror and watch how you came through this life, how things worked against you. Uh, would, would have destroyed and annihilated you, would have terminated your lease on life, robbed you of your joy and stripped you of your dignity, steal away all of your hope and your joy, derail any glimpse of success, dismount your gladness and dissect your faith, cripple your walk and stifle to your talk. And that's why I say just like David said, if it had not been for the Lord, you could have recognized if it had not What will it be? Have you ever thought about it? Thinking, thinking, Rosco, I know you thought about it because you were over there in Nam where stuff was blowing up everywhere. You got some that, yeah, I ain't been over there, I, I think I retired before they got the shooting, digging. <laughs> <laughs> they got the shooting with the deserts over there, I retired. Finally, the last thing is the time in which we live. It helps us to understand the joy that David had in this psalm. And we're living in 2 Timothy 3, where it talks about perilous times. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. It, it says, men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, good God incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, etc., etc. We're living in perilous times, dangerous days, and because of the dangers and the perils, we're dying at a rapid rate. And I just stopped by today to say uh, to you, good God, uh, to say you too, you and I, we're subject to these perils. You too are at risk and in danger. But I'm so glad I'm on the Lord's side. And I'm even the more happier that he chose me. And the Bible said right here in our text, Good God, if it had not been for him, 
And the Bible also tells us that God be for you. Who can be against But there's so much peril around us in these perilous days and times. You leave your home, you don't know if you're going to return. And that's just the truth of the matter. And that's life and business as usual. So you better be prayed up. And you better be stayed up. Good God from Mount Zion. But there's so much peril around us in these perilous times. Conditions of peril. But God is greater than any peril of time. Good God, homelessness, he's greater than that. Joblessness and brokenness. He, he, he's, he's greater than any kind of sickness and violence. Any chaos and calamity. He's greater than any killings and murderings. Good God from Mount Zion. Be it abductions or suicide or even homicide. God is greater than it all. We're living in the last and evil days. And I can uh, pay a tribute just like the author of our song. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? While I'm driving down the 95, if it had not been for the Lord, where would I be? Good God, when I come out of my house, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it back. But if I don't wake up with it in the morning, it'll be all right. Because I got it fixed up with Jesus. I got it fixed up with Mary's baby. My soul is satisfied, and if it had not been for the Lord, I don't know about you, but if it had not been for Him, good God in my walk, if it had not been for Him, in the way I talk, if it had not been for Him, deep down in my soul, He picked me up when I was down, placed my feet on holy ground, and He turned my life completely around. Good God, them girls. Good God from my van. I used to drink that old poison. I used to smoke that old stuff. Good God, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, then I'm so glad he didn't leave me hanging out the drive, but he brought me in. You see, I found out that he walks with me and he talks with me. Trauma down in the valley. 
him. If he had not, I don't believe you realize the stuff he's spared you from. See, half of the stuff you don't even know about. Because he plays his angels all around. As you going through this, I was coming, I was coming to church this morning. I was coming to church this morning. And this thing caught my eye. It caught my eye. I was, I was rolling down the 610 on the countryside, or 610 over there. And, and, and this bird, this big bird, just swooped down. And just as it's almost as if I could see that bird eyeball to eyeball. And at the last minute, he swooped up. And I thought, if it had not been. It's, it's, it's a small thing. But the Lord showed me something. If it had not been. That joker came right at my face. It's almost like I was looking at him in the blood beady ball eye. And you're talking about real time. This joker swoop up. And immediately, my subject, if it had not been, that bird could have drove right down through my windshield. And we could fill in the blank with all that other terrible stuff that could have transpired. And that's how stuff happened. Quickly. Just boom. They'd be singing Amazing Grace at your funeral. But if it had not been, you better recognize God's watching over you. You in your car, rolling down that highway, ain't thinking about nobody. Don't take but a tire to go. Car flip, and we'll be processing in your remains right here. And it was so quick. Everybody don't die of old age. Amen. Am I right, man? Yeah. Yeah. The question is, do you have your soul secured? Do you have the pneuma, the suke? Do you have the suke secured, the soul? If you die right now, that's the question. That's the age-old question. Mm. That's something to think about. If you die right now, you don't even have to answer it. You know the answer yourself. You know if you're saved. And if you're not, this may be your last opportunity. Ain't that something? That's how God operates. This might be your last opportunity to get it right. You ever thought about that? Amen. But you know what? You know what? They say there's a few things that are guaranteed in life. Paying your taxes. You know, right along with that, death. You ain't gonna stay around here forever. You're gonna die. And I ain't trying to scare nobody in the kingdom. I want you to think your way into the kingdom. And make an intelligible thought about it about your soul. I don't need no new, re new Year's resolution. You want to do something new in 23? Make up your mind that you want to be saved. And you want to do like James Cleveland. Y'all can sing if you want to. When he say you got to know that you know that you know. Don't be guessing. They don't guess the game. We ain't trying to play Russian ru roulette when we die. I might make it and I might not. The chances lean against you if that be your strategy. If you got to say I might or might not, chances are you about to bust hell wide open. I might as well just let you know you don't need a sugar coat. If it got to be, well, I've been living good enough, I believe that's good enough for me, I might make it. No, no, never live a lie. Chances are hell getting ready to say, come on. <laughs> All of the church shall we say. I told you today was gonna to be a teacher and type of spirit. I ain't, I ain't really meant to do all that hooping. I 
I just can't hardly help myself, I reckon. Maybe that's one who was done on the Lord. Maybe that's one who want to make up in your mind that I want to be saved. You'll be surprised to know the amount of people that I have preached to that is no longer around. I have a whole congregation in the graveyard. That I preached to. I don't know where they went. It ain't my place to know where they went. But my place to show that there's a heaven, point you to a heaven, and let you know there's a hell. If you're not saved, come to Jesus. You want to renew your membership or want to join the club? Say one. Where you going? Don't let nobody get in your way. Don't even worry about how they look at you. Don't worry about how they talk about you. Because you're going to do good, they're going to talk about you. You do bad, they're going to talk about you. That's just how man is. God bless you. You may be seated.